restoration of your building. That means that some of your trials and tribulations will be intensified because he got to get you through the process quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. He don't have time. See, time will not permit for you to go years and years and years for you to walk in your anointing. So uh, it has to be an acceleration of your building. Amen. It is like a building. I'm, he's behind time. Now, God is not behind time. Amen. Maybe us who put him off schedule. So he has to come in, amen, and hire some additional builders to get back on schedule. Amen. So uh, some of your trials and tribulations will be accelerated. It will be it will be more intense. Don't don't worry about the intensity of it. Just let just 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 know that God is doing something in you. Hallelujah. Hey, let's go ahead and stand and do our declaration of faith. Hallelujah. Uh, repeat these words after me. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hero. And my life is a better having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Go with me please to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Then once we leave 1 Thessalonians, we're going to go to Romans chapter 8. So when we get done with reading 1 Thessalonians, you can have your seat. And then we'll transition over to Romans chapter 8. 1 Thessalonians is right before the book of Timothy. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. It reads like this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Now I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version. He said, Family believers, we walk and admonish you in the Lord Jesus that you follow the instructions that you've received from us about how you ought to walk and please God, just as you're doing now. And that you excel even more and more pursuing a life of purpose and living a life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. For you know what commandments and precepts we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, that you be sanctified separated and set apart from sin, that you abstain and back away from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, being available for God's purpose and separated from things profane, not to be used in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God and are ignorant of his will. And in this matter of sexual misconduct, no man shall transgress and defraud his brother because the Lord is the avenger in all these things. Just as we have told you before and solemnly warn you. For God has not called you to impurity but to holiness. To be dedicated and set apart by behavior that pleases him. Whether in public or in private. So whoever rejects and disregards this is not merely rejecting man. But the God who's given his Holy Spirit to you to dwell in you and empower you. To overcome temptation. You can take your seats and then let's turn over to Romans chapter 8. That's good reading now. That's good reading now. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 8. We're going to begin reading at verse 2. If you dare say amen. amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit are things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen? Amen. Amen. This morning I'm on assignment uh, to teach on this subject. Being spiritually focused. Being spiritually focused. Amen. Father, we come before you right now. Lord, I present my body to your living sacrifice. And I pray, God, that you anoint this 
a vessel of clay, Lord God, so that the Holy Spirit can flow through me as you intended. Father, I pray that you anoint these lips of clay so that I will only speak the very oracles that you have poured into my spirit to give to your people. Holy Spirit, I can't do, I cannot do this without you. And I pray that you make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. There's a word from the Lord this morning. I need you to tap into what we're about to um, release to you about being spiritually focused. Amen. Um, because there's things happening in the body of Christ uh, that are really uh, troubling my spirit and things that I'm seeing. I'm not looking in the natural. I'm looking in the spirit. Amen. And as you all know, those of you all who've been coming out on Wednesdays, I've been dealing with this subject of holiness. Uh, which is separation and dedicated unto God. Amen. You're separated and you're dedicated unto God. And we've been dealing with this topic of morality and how we're doing moral things. Amen. But we're doing it in the wrong vein because in essence, morality has nothing to do with holiness. You can be moral and still not believe God. Amen. You can do more things and, and give your money away to the poor, amen, and still not be in a place where God will be pleased with you. Because the only thing that's going to get us into the kingdom is our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. You must accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Are you listening to me? Amen. And you need to be careful listening to a lot of things that's going on TV. Amen. Because they don't line up with the scriptures. Uh, we have this thing about grace and how basically if you hear the grace teaching is it's basically telling you that you can live any kind of way and you'll be okay. That's not what my Bible tells me. Amen. And not only must you be saved, amen, but you must obey the word of God. Amen. That's He said come out from among them. If he didn't want us to come out from among them, amen, and we can still live any kind of way, how are we going to be okay, amen? God is a God of separation. <laughs> He's going to cause separation in your life, amen? That's why some of you all, you're trying to figure out how come things and people are being separated from my life because they mean you no good, amen. amen? God is calling his people to formulate a relationship like never before. You must have a personal relationship with God, amen? I'm talking about your own relationship, there was a time I was able to get by on my grandmother's prayers. I can't get by on her prayers no more. Because God is coming to see me, amen. And I must be have a relationship with him. And that relationship comes through, comes through prayer and fasting and reading his word. So that when God, he'll be, he'll be like Abraham. He said, I know Abraham. God should know you, amen. Not because you come every now and then looking for spiritual gifts, amen. But because you have a relationship with God. You have a relationship with God. Whether things are going well or whether things are not going well, amen. Because see, we got to be, we got to be, we got to be about our father's business in this season. Are you here this morning? We got to be about our father's business. We can't be out here playing around. Now, let me tell you something. This is not about religion. Uh, religion, amen, will not formulate relationships. Religion is just a litany of, uh, a litany of do's and don'ts whereby man uh, can gain appeasement from God through works, amen. But I know in my Bible he said, through grace are you saved, amen, through faith, through grace are you saved, and not of works, at least you boast. You cannot stand before God and boast about anything. The only thing we can stand before God is like the man of God said, God, I thank you that you saved me. Why, God, did you save me? But people I hung out with, they're either dead or in jail. Oh, God, they don't even know what time of day it is. You got to understand that God separated you from your mother's womb. That's why some of you right now, you're still struggling. Why can't I live any kind of way that I want to live? It's because God's hand is on you. God has consecrated you. And guess what? God didn't even ask your opinion. He didn't even ask your opinion. Hallelujah. That's why some of y'all can't live like a demon no more. You got to come to the you got to come to the ark of safety. You got to get engaged in the things of God. Some of you are trying it and you're still coming up empty. And basically, I will cause you, I will accuse you of being um, suffering from insanity. I would I will accuse you of doing the same thing over and over, but you're expecting different results. That's the that's the definition of insanity. At some point, you got to say, okay, God, I'm going to give up what I know and I'm gonna go with what you know. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you here? Go with me to uh John chapter 17. Kingdom is about relationship because God seeks those whom he can empower to advance his plans, his purposes. In his pursuits, his plans, his purposes, and his pursuits, not ours. 
not ours. I know many of you all consumed about what's going on in D.C. and you know it's election time. The only thing I can tell you is get out there and vote. That's all I can tell you. Just get out there and vote. But I don't worry about what's going on in Washington, D.C. because I know that everything that's happening is working in God's timing. God is still in control. I used to see what I'm saying. God can use Darius and he can use Cyrus to bring his people back to him. He can use anybody. The thing that we got to understand is we got to look in the spirit and not in the natural. Amen? Amen. 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 All the things that you are seeing happening, these are not just natural things. These are demon spirits that have been aroused and awakened. That's why you see bigotry and hatred and racism spread up like never before. It's not that it had left. They had just been lulled to sleep until such a time as this where they have been released. And that's why you got to understand is this spiritual or is it natural? It is a spiritual situation that's happening because God is bringing his raiment and lining us up to prepare for his soon return. So we got to be focused. In this day and age like never before. I mean, you got to be able to take a hit, amen, and not fall down. You got to be able to take a hit, amen, and not leave church or not be gone from church for weeks at a time. Because you don't know what kind of spiritual information or download that God wants to give you that's going to empower you to take you to another level. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. In this season, God spoke to my spirit. He said, now I release a different anointing on this church. Amen. I wasn't even going to get this to you. He said, but it's a different anointing. Because we had, see, you got to understand, in, in, in life, you go through different milestones. Yeah. Amen. You got to go through the process. You can't accept you a just a supernatural genius because you got some people that are 11, 12 years old who have graduated high school and they're in college. Yeah. But that's, that's an anomaly. That's not normal. But for the rest of us, amen, people like me, you have to go through the process. You can't skip grades because you're brilliant or you're a genius or anything of that nature. And the same thing in the spirit realm. You have to go through a process. Are you listening to me? And, and as you go through the process and you pass the test, you get elevated. A lot of us can't get elevated because we're in the way. And God said, I released a different anointing on this church and on this ministry, amen. But it's only for those who will obey. Now, I have no control over whether or not you obey. That's on you. I'm going to obey. Because I know where God wants, us, wants to take us, and I'm willing to go with God. Amen. Because I don't want to come up short. And see, when you come up short, not only do you come up short for yourself, you come up short for your family. You come up short for your co-workers. You come up short for your constituents because God wants to use you to bring somebody into the kingdom of God. Some of us got to stop thinking, stop walking around here and being spiritually obese and then we won't share our testimony with nobody. Because we're afraid of what they're saying. To hell with what they'll say, amen. The thing is, you want to keep them out of hell and bring them into the kingdom of God. And for those of you all who don't think hell is real, it is real. It is a real place. They are there. They are suffering. Do you think that God is going to allow Judas to betray Jesus Christ and he's sitting up in heaven? I will tell you no. He's not in heaven. He's in a place all by himself being tormented. Because of his betrayal and his treasonous act that he did against the son of the living God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we have to get focused like never before. Amen. Amen. It's too many people, too many of us. I don't know what I don't know what can happen to some of us. In the world, somebody look at you wrong, you go upside their head. <laughs> then you get in church and somebody say something that you don't like across the pulpit, amen, and then you get offended. Don't you understand that this has to do with your soul? And let me help y'all out. I'm going to be teaching on this uh, on Wednesday. Your body is not ever going to be saved. Some of you all are struggling in your flesh because you won't line up with the word of God. Your spirit is saved, amen. Your soul is in the process of being saved and set apart. But this flesh will never be saved. That's why you have to, certain things, we're trying to demonize stuff so much, guess what? You can't, you can't get delivered. Some of this stuff is you're doing it because I want to do it. 
I want to do it. If I go, if I go back to the cheesecake factory, guess what I'm going to have? Amen. I'm not going to the cheesecake factory and leave there without no cheesecake. That's my flesh. Amen. So I ain't going to be talking about God deliver me from cheesecake. And I know I'm going to the cheesecake factory. And I'm going to the cheesecake factory. I'm going to get some cheesecake. The best thing for me to do is bypass the cheesecake factory. And then I won't get no cheesecake. But I'm not going to do that. Amen. Are you in John chapter 17? Verse 19. Listen to this. And for their, and for their sakes... I sanctify myself. This is Jesus talking. The 17th chapter of St. John is a prayer. And this is what Jesus is praying to the Father. Watch this. And for their sakes. For whose sakes? For their sakes. Who's it there? That's us. He said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. I set myself apart. That they may also be sanctified through the truth. Do you see that? See, it is the truth, the word of God, that's going to sanctify us. That's it's the word of God that's going to separate us. Let's go deeper. He said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I am them, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, let me tell you something. I'll say this last night. Let me tell you something. Do you recognize when people see you they realize the, 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 the manifestation of Jesus in the flesh. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about when you're behaving like you're supposed to be, when you're acting like you're supposed to act. When they see you, they know Jesus is real. Amen. But if you're not acting the way that you're supposed to be acting, according to the scripture, when they see you, they don't believe Jesus. Amen. Because they're saying, you don't even act like who you say you believe in. You don't have his nature. And you're not spiritually minded. You're not spiritually focused about doing your father's business. No matter where you are. I may not be there, but guess who's there? God. He's there. He's omnipresent, which means he's everywhere. And so anywhere I go, I don't need my wife there. I know that God is present with me, so I must conduct myself in a way that will glorify him and represent Jesus Christ to the world. Am I preaching to myself? We represent Jesus the Christ, the son of the living right. Jesus, that word Christ means Jesus the anointed one. And his anointing rests on you. His anointing rests on me. Amen. Every regardless of where I go, Jesus should be represented in me and through me and upon me. Amen. And then we're supposed to be as one. We shouldn't be in the church arguing, fussing, and fighting. We should be as one. The Bible said uh, that, that we know we're part of the kingdom of God because we what? Love the brethren. How can you be in church, amen, and you got enemy division, strife, and discord going on in the church? I'm talking about being spiritually focused on the things of God. Because what happens is this. When you don't practice the principles of God, you at least save to have access to your life. Why do you think we're seeing these things going on? We was watching this thing on the news the other day. Now watch it. Let me tell you how the devil, how, how demonism has gotten so bad now. This is in China. They're going across the bridge. And I guess the bus driver had missed the woman's stop. She goes up there and she's hitting the bus driver. He's trying to fight her off. While he's fighting her off, they plunge 110 feet into the river. Nobody survived. You mean to tell me you that bad? That ain't normal. Okay, you can go back to your stop, but now you can't get your life back no more. That's why we got to get this anger and this bitterness under control. It costs everybody on their bus their lives because of what? One person. What I said the other night, all it takes is one. That's all it takes is one. So I want to find out who that one is who has that aching spirit that continually want to disobey God because I want him out of here because I don't want nothing holding my blessings. I don't want nothing standing in the way of God trying to elevate me and take this church to another level. Because let me tell you something. If you got the, if you got an aching, it may cost your child their lives. It may cost your child their salvation. So I want to erode, I want to erect, I want to, well, excuse me, I want to expose every demon spirit that don't want to obey the word of God. 
Because you see what the scripture said? It said, you're not, you're not just disobeying man, you're disobeying God. Especially when you know you're getting the truth. He said, thy truth will sanctify you. It is the word of God that will separate you. That will make you different from everybody else. Now guess what? You better have an intestinal fortitude. What does intestinal fortitude mean? That means in the, in, in, in the midst of people mocking you and ridiculing you, you got to be able to stand. Yes. We were talking about Noah this morning. And you got to understand something. Noah and his three sons and their wives were the only one chosen by God. And this is in the Middle East. This is not in America. It's in the Middle East. Everybody on the planet of the earth is not saved. But Noah. So for 120 years, he's working on this ark. Because it's about to rain. But it had never rained. Can you imagine what he went through? Every single day for 120 years. But Noah stayed focused on what God had told him to do. Noah stayed focused in the midst of ridicule, in the midst of people uh, uh, trying to provoke him to anger and trying to tease him so that he'll get off path. Let me tell you something. You better have a backbone in this hour. I'm talking about a backbone to having done all to stand. And when you can't do nothing else, stand. And let me tell you something else. When the devil is, some of the devil is trying to come up against you all, for you all to throw in the towel, that's to let you know, you should know right then and there that you're close. You're close to breakthrough. You're close to going to the next level. You're close to getting where God wants you to go. When he's trying to tell you, throw in the towel, it don't work. You tell him, look in the face, say, you are a liar. And you come from the pit, that lie come from the pit of hell. I'm standing course. I don't care what it costs me. I'm going on with God. Some of y'all, oh your family is your idol. I'm just going to say it. The Bible says, what profit a man to gain a whole world but lose his soul? Some of you are going to lose your soul behind your family members. Mm. They're dragging you down. They're dragging you down spiritually. They're dragging you down mentally. They're dragging you down psychologically. Some of you are going to lose your corner coming. Why? Because of the family. Leave them grown people to God. Leave them to God. Give them to God and move on. And get in your place and do what God has told you to do. That's why he told Abraham, separate yourself. And when you read that Bible, his father went with him, his brother-in-law went with him. It was until his dad died that he finally got it. I didn't tell you to bring them jokers with you. I told you to separate yourself from your family, from your religion, from all that idolatry. Separate yourself. And God is telling somebody here this morning, separate yourself. You got to get an attitude. I don't care what my family is going to say. I don't care what they're going to do. I'm going with God. I'm going with God. We're raising up a group of children who will not make the dumb decision that some of us made. They will go to college. They will be entrepreneurs. They will be doctors and lawyers and accountants. I'm decreed in the name of Jesus because they're sitting up on the word. But more importantly, because of the anointing that's in this house to destroy yokes, they will not do some of the things that some of us did. They will happen here to here. They will be used of God. They will be anointed of God. They will be used to bring their peers into the kingdom of God. They will be used to bring grown folks in the kingdom of God. Why? Because they're going to be spiritually focused on the things of God. Because they're dealing with things that we couldn't even comprehend at their age. God has been dealing with me about very aspects of our relationship with him. Now watch this. This relationship has nothing to do with materialism. Because just by you being in God, it automatically opens up the door that you have certain um, benefits that's going to come with you. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Some of us are seeking God for things. It's not the things that we should be seeking God for. It's the anointing. It's deliverance. It's healing. It's restoration. 
And guess what? When you do that, the stuff going to come. God is not going to leave you in a situation where you're destitute. But you got to be spiritually focused. You got to be spiritually locked in to the things of God. Amen. You cannot be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Thinking that you'll get somewhere in God. One thing I tell you about this ministry right now. We teach sound biblical doctrine. We, I'm not going to stand here. No, I stand, I will allow anybody else to stand here to bring you a word that's going to tickle your flesh. We trying to get you to kill your flesh, crucified. One translation in Thessalonians said, mortified. Kill it. Kill the flesh. Look at your neighbor say you need to kill it. Because if you don't kill it, it's going to kill you. Drop down to John 17, 14. Or drop up to John 17, 14. And I'm reading from the Amplified Word. This is what God has given us. Let me tell you something. Do you know why he said too much is given, much is required? Do you know why much is required of us? They didn't have this. They didn't have this. Amen. All they had was the law, which was the first five books of the Bible. That's all they had. We got it all. We got the whole deal. Let me tell you something. God loves you so much. He told you how it begun, then he shows you how it's going to end. It's going to end with us on top. Amen. We have the victory. Do you understand what I'm saying? How can you, how can you still continue to play pity pat with Satan when God has already shown you in revelation that we win? Even during the trial, even during the tribulation period, God's going to pull us out of here, amen, before things get too bad. Why? Because even in the book of Genesis, by the time God got to Noah, everybody who was righteous had already been put to sleep. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. If you go and study the book of Genesis, only thing we're doing is going back to where it used to be. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We're going back. The millennial reign is going to be just like it was in the Garden of Eden. Except, except for it being Adam and Eve there, all of us who are saved are going to be there. You're not going to be in heaven. You're going to be on the earth during the millennial reign. That's a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Y'all listen to me. I ain't just trying to get to heaven. I'm going to heaven, but it's for a temporary time frame. Because after the tribulation period is over with, Christ is going to come down here. He's going to bring his church and all the saints who have died in God will come into the earth and we're going to rule for 1,000 years. It's in the book of Revelation. Then after the millennial reign, God's going to release Satan one more time. You say, why? Because there's still going to be human beings on the face of the earth. We're not going to be normal because we're going to have a glorified body. Y'all see me? We're going to have a glorified body, so he can't tempt us with sin. But there's going to be a bunch of human beings on the face of the earth. He's coming to tempt them. Y'all just looking. Okay. John 17, verse 14. I have given to you, I have given to them your word, the message you gave me. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. And do not belong to the world, just as I am out of the world, and do not belong to it. Watch this. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but that you keep them and protect them from the evil one. See, the reason we're going through what we're going through is we're not of the world. The world hates you. Anybody ever been mocked for being saved? I'm talking about mocked. You holy roller. I remember, you think you, you, think you all that. And then you got to get the attitude with them. You think you's all that because you saved now. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to mock you. Why? Because they, they recognize you no longer run like them. You no longer act like them. That you've been changed. And, 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 and then the fulfillment of God's word is being manifested in your life. You got you to be able to stand up. Because really what they're trying to say is I want to be like you, but I, I want to hold on to my flesh. And some of them want to be like you and be like me, but they worried about what Pooh and Ray Ray and Nook Nook say. I ain't going to hell for Pooh and Ray Ray and Nook Nook. I'm not. 
I want to be saved for real. I'm talking about for real. I'm not talking about this salvation where I got one foot in the world and one foot in, in, in the church, amen. But, but that, that one foot that's in the world is more in the world than my other foot is in church. People should know that you're saved. You should be walking around here letting people know I'm saved. You're not going to talk around me any kind of way. You're not going to talk to me any kind of way. Amen. Because I'm saved and I'm in the kingdom of God. That's what I'm talking about being uh, uh, spiritually minded. Yes. Spiritually focused on the things of God. Yes. Some of y'all messing around you go out here and mess with the wrong guy and or woman. And the person that God has for you walk right past you because they think that you're the one. But when she with somebody else, you that ain't the one. Amen. You can't. Can you afford a setback? So you had to be a couple, two wins to go to understand what I'm saying. Can you afford a setback right now? I told him I got a phone call this week from somebody who had suffered a setback. I mean, a major setback. And I'm thinking, why you didn't call me before we got here? Because every man in this church has my phone number. Amen. Why you didn't call me when you was over here? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. I'm not going to tell you something wrong. Amen. All right. Go to, go to um, James 3 and 1. I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. I'm going to tell you why I'm scared. They know where I'm going. See, the problem with the church is there's no reverence. There's no fear. There's no respect for the things of God. That's why we have people that get in the pulpit and say anything and do anything and have girlfriends and boyfriends in, 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 the, uh, in the audience because they're not saved. Do you understand me? Jesus is not no homosexual. Amen. Jesus is not an adulterer, nor has he ever been with a woman. I'm just trying to tell you. The Bible said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So how in the world, I supposed to have the spirit of God on the inside of me, but I'm bound by sexual perversion. Mm -mm. As a I'm not saved or God is lying. I'm just saying. Oh, it gets good. I'm telling you that we need to start examining people by their fruit. Not their gift. Because you got people that will talk you out of your rent money. Amen. And then turn right around and go to the hotel room and got cocaine, crack, and everything else there, plus the pornography. It's their gift. You got to examine the vessel. That's why I preach Sunday. I mean, where's the night? A vessel of honor. We got too many vessels in the church that's not of honor. And some of us, you need your spiritual discernment to be shopping because some of on the Holy Ghost on the inside of you saying something's not right. How in the world are we going to church and they're taking four and five offerings every Sunday? That's not of God. And then you don't even know where the money's going. You in James 3 and 1? Okay. My brethren, not many of you should desire to be teachers. One translation said masses because you come upon a greater condemnation. Let me tell you something for you all that want to preach the word of God. The moment you start down that process, every word that you tell the people, every word that you give and preach and teach to the people, you come upon a double condemnation. So you better make sure that whatever you're teaching them is the truth because your life may be on the line. Because you will give an account for every word that came out of your mouth. Every word. Yes, ma'am. Every word. So we want to sit up here. Anybody want to rush to get up here? Rush and get up here if you want to. Rush and get up here if you want to. You won't rush and get up here in this church. Amen. But you go to another church and they'll give you, they'll give you the Burger King. Do it your way. The devil is a liar. 
You won't be doing it your way here. And that's why we got people in the pulpit who have no reverence for the things of God because who birthed them out don't have no reverence for the things of God. We better stop. We better get saved for real. Okay, go to John 3.16. John 3.16. I thank God I can go to a church and tell me the truth. Amen. Amen. John 3.16. This is... Let me tell you something. If I ain't know nothing in the Baptist church, I knew John 3.16. A little old small Baptist church. We didn't even have Central AC. The piano was out of tune. We had a choir, but they really couldn't sing. But one thing they could do, they could teach you on John 3.16. Do you understand me? And it was beating us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but will have what? Everlasting life. And we hung our lives on that scripture. Amen. And we, we, we got saved on that scripture. And some of us, we went up there, but we did truly get saved. Because there was no change on the inside. Except there be a change. You didn't get all that you were supposed to get. Even on the morning, man, I don't, I don't care how they got you to call on the name of Jesus. Call on him. Call on him. But you calling on him ain't going to do no good if you ain't saved. Because he ain't going to listen. Because the only way that you can call on him is you got to know him. And we up on the bench and call on him. You call on him, you call on him. And then you get up just like you're just sweating when you get up. Because he ain't came and visited you because it ain't no change. But this is the key. This is where I believe the Baptists missed it at. Down to verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Saved. Might be what? Saved. Saved. 18. He who believes in him is not condemned. You see that? But he who does not believe is already condemned. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Do you see that? That means that if you do not believe in Jesus, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. But there should be a transformation. You know what a transformation is? It's like a, a cattle puller. Everybody seen a cattle puller? They're not very attractive at all. It really is kind of slimy. But really, what's going to happen is he has to go through a process because eventually that cattle puller is going to go and build itself a cocoon. And it's going to close itself up in that cocoon. Why he's in that cocoon, or why it's in that cocoon, a transformation is taking place. That's why those of you all who see the cocoon, some of you all have went and tried to help the caterpillar, I mean help the butterfly, because now it's turned to a butterfly, and really you, you hurt the butterfly. Because let me tell you something, some of your trials, you got to muscle your own way out of it. Some of y'all want us to come up there and cut the, uh, uh, cut the cocoon, and cut the cocoon before time. See, why it's cutting through that cocoon, it's building its wings. It's splintering itself so that when it comes through the cocoon, it can fly. And some of you all, you're going to have to get in your prayer closet and ask God to let you come out of that cocoon at the right time, at the right season. And stop looking for everybody. I need you to pray for me. Pray for yourself. I need you to fast on me. Fast for yourself. I need you to help me with the word. Get in that word for yourself. Because in the meantime, like the woman of God said, he's building you. He's strengthening you so that you can come out of the cocoon. And when you come out of it, you'll be able to fly. Some of us are always looking for a helping hand. Some of your trials is just between you and God. Some things you're going through, nobody's supposed to know you're going through it. Because it's between you and God. And God is the one that's going to bring you out. Because what happened is, we become dependent on other people. 
And the more we become dependent on it, guess what? We're running to them. Every time something happens, I stub my toe. I just come over here to get prayer. I stub my toe. You got to hit it. I just want to let you know. And that's why the people get tired of you. Because by now, you should be grown up. Amen. If you're spiritually focused, if you're focused on the things of God, you're not supposed to stay a baby. Now, how would I look if y'all had a pastor did this? It looks ridiculous, don't it? That's the way some of us is. We don't want to grow up. We don't want to, you know, we don't want we, I can't remember the, 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 um, the peanut carrier, the one walking around with the blanket all the time. Linus. Everywhere Linus went, he got the blanket. Linus let the blanket go. It's time to grow up, Linus. It's time to get our fingers out of our mouths, get off the pattern, come and take your place at the table. Amen. Pick up your fork, pick up your knife, and cut your food. That's what God is calling us to do. That's why we have to be spiritually focused on the things of God. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Okay. Go to Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 5. Okay. This is not in my notes. I think it's chapter 5. Because I got to show you something. Isaiah chapter 5. No, go to verse 14. Isaiah chapter 5, yes. Isaiah chapter 5. This is not in my notes, but this is important. This is important. Y'all all right? Okay. Physically, this is the way we preach. This is the way we teach. Okay. I'm not going to stand before God because I didn't preach the way he told me to preach. Because see, when I was in the world, I was wild. See, y'all won't ride. Y'all just good. Y'all were good at two shoes in the world. I was a fool for Satan. And now that I'm saved, I'm going to be a fool for God. A radical fool for God. Do you understand me? Because I'm going to make up all the time that I spent out there in the world. I want to make it up. And I want to give the double, not a black eye, but a double black eye. I want to be the use of God to save people, to get people healed, to get people delivered, to get people restored, amen, from the very pits of hell. Why? Because I want to make him pay. I want to make him pay. Okay. Verse 14. Therefore, Sheol has enlarged herself and opened his mouth, be opened his mouth beyond measure. The glory of their multitude and their pump he who is jubilant shall descend into it. Now, now I'm reading the New King James. The, the King James say a word. What does it say? Hell. There you go. It says hell has enlarged itself. Every single day, hell gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Why? Because people are going to hell every day. Amen. Now, hell was never meant. It was only meant for the devil and his angels. But those that don't want to obey God, those who don't want to accept God's son, those who don't want to live by God's commandments are going to hell. Do you understand what I'm telling you? That's why I showed you this scripture. Every day is getting bigger and bigger. And so I got a sense of urgency now to make sure that we are saved. Y'all remember that movie, I'm um, Left Behind? Yes, sir. Well, I'm to the black pastor. Now, the rapture had taken place. And somebody went up in the church. Guess who was in the church? The black pastor. And guess who he was talking to? He was walking around. I fooled everybody. I fooled everybody but you. He had played the role. They believed in him. They went to his church. And when they, the church left him, guess who was left here? The preacher. Oh, he got it right, but he had to go through some things. See, he should have been on that first trip out of here. That's why you can't sit here and tell him, because I preach, I got it made. You ain't got it made. If anything, you better be like Paul. Paul said, I buffeted my flesh. He said, I beat my flesh. 
He didn't literally beat his flesh, but he spent hours in that word. He spent hours fasting. And then there were times when Paul was persecuted and he got beat. Paul said, I buffeted my flesh. At least I haven't, amen, uh, 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 caused others to be saved. I myself be a reject. Don't think you're not above being a reject. Do you understand what I'm saying? It ain't about your title. It ain't about your gifting. It's whether or not you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. And for those of you backslid, don't be playing the devil. Don't be playing the devil. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of y'all walk around here, quote, quote scripture, ain't a bit more say than a man in the moon and a dog on pig suit. Mm. I, look, look, I ain't playing around. It's time to get saved. Amen. It's time to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, and it's time for us to see the fruit on the inside of you. Yeah. It's time to receive Jesus Christ. What if this was your last day on the face of earth? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to see Jesus? Ask your, ask your name. Are you ready? Look at him. No, 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 no. Don't do this thing. Are you ready? No. Look at him seriously. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm telling you, you got to be serious about this thing. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to see Jesus? And the Lord came for you today. Are you ready? Because if you're not ready, and something happens to you, and you die, and your spirit and your soul leave your body, you're not going to be with the Lord. You're not going to the kingdom of God. Am I making sense? Yeah. So too many of us, we're playing around in church. We're playing around in church. And some of us, our demons are just undercover. They're just undercover. Do you understand me? Now, how can I preach like this? Because I used to go to church and was still dipping and slipping. So y'all wouldn't do nothing like that. But I did. Wasn't preaching, praise God. But I was dipping and slipping. Until one night, God got a hold of me. And I knew it was God. Do you understand me? That's why apostles, they have a supernatural encounter with God. Not just little, I'm talking about, you ever been jacked up back up? I'm talking about jacked up. And God tells you, he said, you're going to make a decision tonight. He said, I'm tired of your foolishness. He said, after you go with me tonight, all the way in, well, I'm going to expose you. Now, of course, I'm going to do the religious thing. I try to call people I know. At, my, at the time, my grandmother was alive. I'm trying to call her. Guess what God did? I couldn't get a hold of nobody. We ain't nobody to pick up the phone. Amen. I'm serious. Nobody. Not even my own grandmother. It wasn't late at night, but she wouldn't pick up the phone. You know why? Because God supernaturally cut it off. He said, you ain't going to use nobody else as a crutch. You going to make this decision today yourself. Amen. Couldn't get a hold of nobody. Do you hear me? And I made a decision because I was afraid of God. And from that day to now, I've not looked to the left nor to the right. Because see, you all make it go back out there. I can't. I cannot go back out there. There's nothing worth your soul. Am I talking to anybody? There's nothing worth your soul. Not Pookie, not Ray Ray, not Shaquigal, not Crack, not Reefer, not Liquor, 
not pornography. None of it is worth your soul. Does everybody understand that? Nothing. And so it's time for us. Number one, let's get saved. Let's save. Let's give. Let's give our lives to Christ. Okay. And some of you all, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Here come the apostle. You're missing too much church. Do I make myself clear? You can't be going over churches and eating cotton candy. And then you come over here and then you choke it on the meat. You know, cotton candy ain't no more sugar. It's tickling your flesh. It makes you, just your height. But then that next week when the demons come, you're getting defeated. Because they're beating you upside the head. I'm just telling you. You have to be focused like never before. Remember where the woman is going. I'm giving you close. Remember what God said. Don't, don't, just, don't just take that lightly. He's building. Amen. Yeah. He's building. you almost there because, Donald, you're almost there because, see, you you don't see him. He knows what's waiting on him. He knows he can't afford to fall back. And now he knows too much. Amen. Some of y'all, the worst thing you're going to do came back worse, test by the word ministry because here you're going to get the truth. But now watch this. Some of you all's, your building is going to be accelerated. That means that your trial, that's why your trial is the way it is. He has to accelerate it. And sometimes you're like, I don't know if I can make it. In Jesus Christ, you can. You've got to hold on. Amen. Don't become relaxed in what's going on in your life. Don't think that you have made it. Amen. 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 Elder Nell, he wants to take you to another level. You just entering into the stage of what God wants to do in your life. Amen. Amen. Some of you all have to play catch up. <laughs> Amen. And so God going to help you to catch up because he has to get you back in place. Amen. Some of you all have to say, okay, God, I'm tired of running around. I'm tired of doing it on my own. I'm ready to submit. Because your trials, your, your, your growth is going to be accelerated. The closer we get to the turn, that's why we're going to see supernatural wonders, signs, and miracles like never before. Some of you all, amen, your credit, some of you, some of that bad credit y'all got is about to be wiped off your credit report. Listen to what I'm saying. Amen. Some of you all, your credit is going to be healed, and it's going to be healed supernaturally. Some of you all couldn't get certain jobs. God's going to clean you up. He's going to clean your record up so you can get these jobs. Because God's getting ready to put his people strategically where you normally wouldn't qualify to get a job. Some of you all are living in situations, amen, that you're trying to figure out why I'm living this way. That's about over. You're going to be able to get a, a good place where you can stay. You're going to be able to get a stable place where you're going to be able to stay, amen? Y'all better receive this word. I'm telling you right now. Some of you all, amen, you just trying to find your place. You're going to find your place. Amen. Woman of God, you have given so much. God's about to release a double fold on you. A double fold. Amen. I've never seen anybody who has a heart for souls, amen, who bring people to church, who will take her last dime and give it to people to make sure God's about to relieve a lot of stuff that you've been going through for years. God's about to wipe your credit straight. God's about to line things up with your husband, line things up with your household in the name of Jesus. He's about to do it. I'm telling you right now, he's about to do it. Y'all about to get ready. You better get it ready. You better stop playing around with God. You better stop getting in place with God. Stop whining about what you're going through and recognize that God has already brought you out of it. He's already brought you out of it. He's already brought you out of it. There's a reason why we had to go through it. See, some of it, God has to get his glory. Job didn't go through what he went through just to be going through it. God got the glory, but Job got a double portion of the blessing of God. Double portion. Got a double portion. Double portion. Because of your heart for the for the things of God, Sister Davis, God got something for you. He said, when your ways please him, even your enemies gonna be at peace with you. People that don't get along with you, people that don't that can't stand you, they about to start pouring into you. They about to start playing seed into you. They don't understand the reason why. All that they know is I gotta do this because God put it on my heart. 
put it on my heart. Just put it on my heart. In the name of Jesus, put it on my heart. Come on, Officer Savior. He's put it on my heart. Don't, don't, not actually. I'm, I'm going to let you know. Now, I want her to come. He's put it on my heart. You understand me? He's put it on my heart. Ain't nothing like people coming up to you that can't stand you giving you stuff, giving you money, blessing you. Hallelujah. And don't worry about it. It ain't you, it's God. It's God's favor on your life. It's His favor. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing like being in there in the perfect will of God when His favor shines on you. Hallelujah. God's about to purify you. God wants you in a certain He's about to purify you. He's about to purify you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When God gets done with you, the glory gonna go with you on your job. The glory of God. People gonna know that you're saved. People, you gonna be on your job. People say, look, woman, God, there's something different about you. I want what you got. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Ah, ye so to ba ba sha. Ye so to ma 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 sha. Ye bo 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 sha. Ah, ye so to ba ba si he lo bo 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 she. Ah, ye so to ma 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 sha. Ye sa ta ma si he lo bo 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 she. Ah, ye so to ma ma. Come here, come here. Okay, you can cut it. 